The Mandalorian is back. I would like to see the baby. And yes, so is the child, aka Baby Yoda, as they continue their search across the galaxy for more Mandalorians to help lead them to the elusive Jedi. Here are eight Easter eggs from the season two premiere episode, chapter nine, The Marshal. Number one, C-3PO Graffiti. In the opening scene, the Mandalorian leads the child through a city street and he notices graffiti along the walls. Most of it depicts stormtroopers with X's drawn over their faces, but in a blink and you miss it shot, there appears to be a depiction of our favorite protocol droid. Of course, there are other similar looking protocol droids out there, but how many of them are special enough to be included in wall art? What are you telling them? Hello, I think. I could be mistaken, they're using a very primitive dialect, but I do believe they think I am some sort of god. Number two, R5. Well, come on, Red, let's go. <laughs> Uncle Owen. Yeah? This R2 unit has a bad motivator, look. Hey, what are you trying to push on us? When Mando returns to Tatooine in his search for other Mandalorians, he is greeted at the starport by Amy Sedaris' character, Heli Mato. When he asks her for a map, she summons a droid who is a bit slow to respond. Yes, that is the same R5 unit with a bad motivator from Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope. You can even see the scorch marks from where the droid popped its top. What are you doing? You're supposed to be out plowing the field. It's hot. We'll do it tomorrow. Come on, man. It's your job. Uh, not really feeling it. Hey, could you move a little? You're totally blocking my view. Uncle Owen, this droid has a bad motivator. Number three, the Marshal. Cobb Vanth is the Marshal in Mos Pelgo, and he wears a set of armor that is very familiar to Star Wars fans, but we will discuss that in the next section. Cobb Vanth first appeared in the Aftermath series, and it's great to see him introduced to the live-action Star Wars universe. When his town was raided, he fled with a Camtono of Silicax crystals. A Camtono is a personal safe that looks like an ice cream maker because the prop was made from a real-life ice cream maker. He wandered the desert where he was rescued by Jawas. He traded the crystals to them in exchange for their help and a set of Mandalorian armor that the Jawas aren't clear on how they acquired. Number four, Boba Fett's armor. The armor in question is the Mandalorian armor of Boba Fett. The last time we saw this armor, it was being worn by Boba as he dropped into the gaping maw of the Sarlacc. In much of the Star Wars Legends lore, Boba Fett survived this incident, but there is nothing official in the new Disney canon that he is alive, other than the appearance of his armor here and another Easter egg at the end of the episode. But if Boba's armor somehow made it out of the Sarlacc, might the infamous bounty hunter have made it out as well? Number five, the speeder. Cobb Vanth and Din Djarin come to an agreement. Cobb will return the armor to the Mandalorians if Mando helps him deal with a crate dragon that is terrorizing the town. As they are heading into the wastes of Tatooine to find the beast, Cobb pulls up next to Mando's speeder bike on a custom-built speeder of his own. It seems to be a single engine from a pod racer converted into a speeder bike, but it's not just any old pod racer engine. It looks to be one of the engines from Anakin Skywalker's pod in episode one, The Phantom Menace. Given that it's some 40 years later and it's been heavily modified, I'm willing to bet that it is. Number six, the Tusken Raiders. In their travels to the Crate Dragon, the duo is stopped by Tusken Raiders, or Sand People. Mando speaks to them using a combination of their own language and sign language and reveals that they want to help kill the Crate. There are so many small details about the Tuscans that are great to see, from them leading the Banthas in a single file. These tracks are side by side. Sand people always ride single file to hide their numbers. To the dog-like beasts they have with them, first seen in episode two, Attack of the Clones, and even their relation with the settlers, who see them as savages. But Mando explains they are a savage people because they live in a savage environment, but they are true to their word. They will stand by our side in battle and vow never to raise a blaster against this town until one of you breaks the peace. Number seven, the Crate Dragon. 
When the settlers and the sand people finally come together to face the dragon, it is an awesome fight. The strategy for defeating the crate is almost exactly the same as in Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, a popular Star Wars RPG that came out in 2003. From planting the explosives to drawing the crate dragon out using a bantha as bait, anyone who played the game instantly recognized the strategy and it was just fun to see and a great nod to longtime fans. And just like in the game, things don't quite go as planned. At one point, Mando even gets eaten, but he makes it out alive. Now we saw moments earlier that the vomit from this thing disintegrates people, but apparently the Mandalorian armor protected our hero. Hmm. I can think of another character who is eaten by a giant beast on Tatooine, but he was also wearing Mandalorian armor, which brings us nicely to... Number 8. Boba Fett Many of the Easter eggs on this list hint at Boba Fett being alive, but none more so than the final scene of a mysterious figure looking down on Mando and his recently retrieved set of armor. When the figure turns around to walk away, we see it is none other than Tamura Morrison, who played Jango Fett in Episode 2, Attack of the Clones who Boba Fett is an identical clone of. Now, some have theorized that this is in fact Captain Rex or some other clone, but the clones used for the clone army age double the rate of humans, so Rex would be 80 to 90 years old looking at this point. Boba Fett, on the other hand, would be in his mid 40s, which fits much more in line with the quick glimpse we saw. Tamura Morrison is only listed so far as being in one episode this season, but this YouTuber hopes that they haven't released the fact that he is in other episodes as to keep spoilers from being spoiled. I hope to see more Boba Fett in this season, but only time will tell. Thanks for joining us here on GNN. Were there more Easter eggs or references that you saw? Tell us in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. And don't forget to check out geeknewsnow.net for all your geek news needs.